Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Um, we are happy that you have joined our session today. My name is Amy Mirafat. I am a private sector specialist uh, with IFC's employability program, VTI, and I will be moderating this session. Today, we want to talk to you about employer engagement. We know that many education institutions, including some of our clients, struggle with this. We also know that uh, engaging industry can have huge benefits on creating relevant programs, education programs, and most importantly, equipping your students with the skills and knowledge that they need to become employable. Research is scientific research carried out to resolve a specific problem. So the difference between basic and applied research is that basic research is um, research carried out to acquire new knowledge and understand the foundation of a phenomena. Um, and what are the facts that can be observed around it, right? Um, the results or the outcome of basic research is a general conclusion or a theory that are valid at any context. Um, it means that the results are um, a temporal or timeless. Um, whereas in applied research is scientific research carried out to um, solve uh, or propose solutions to practical problems. Uh, the results are only valid um, for a, that specific context of study. Um, it can be in the form of uh, prototypes, clinical studies, reports, or even uh, vaccines. Um, well, um, first, I, I wanted to differentiate um, applied research uh, when we're talking about uh, employability, right? Um, so when we're talking about employability, um, we, we're talking about building uh, industry partnerships, right? Um, a lot of universities already perform applied research with public funding, but to boost employability, universities need to create uh, links with employers. Uh, and applied research is a great way to do so because it's an, in, it's an engagement with uh, value add to the industry partner. Uh, Another uh, form or a modality of applied research uh, involving uh, the students would be um, having applied research as a work integrated learning modality. Um, the university would work with an industry partner on a problem-based problem -based, uh, project um, which the employer wants to solve. Uh, students would work on it uh, guided uh, by a professor. And in this case, it's a win-win situation uh, for the company and for the students. Um, for the students, um, they get to work with the potential uh, employer and work on uh, multidisciplinary tasks. Um, for the company, there is no contract involved. Uh, they don't need to allocate specific um, office space uh, and it's free of charge. Um, they only need to dedicate some time to support students uh, through the process uh, with the industry expertise and giving feedback. Um, this modality is often known as uh, project-based learning or challenge-based learning, uh, and it can be worked um, as part of the curriculum. As an applied and technical university, um, we're very keen on applied research and not um, uh, open-ended uh, blue ocean uh, research. Um, so um, in this regard, um, uh, we approach it in, in two main um, uh, uh, paths. The first one is the research that is led by a faculty member. Um, uh, so um, in, in, in this, um, we try to encourage the faculty members uh, to uh, focus on um, identifying and working with industry to identify um, uh, problems and challenges that are um, real challenges being faced by the industry. Um, um, and we try to encourage the faculty members also to um, involve students. Or the other In path is where the student is actually at the core of, of the research project. Um, when um, um, uh, the students um, embark on uh, the apprenticeship, which is what we call, or the name we have at HTU for work integrated learning. And it's um, an eight month um, experience uh, with uh, employers. Um, so each student has to do an eight month um, uh, long uh, work integrated um, uh, learning. Um, uh, they do 
um, also during this period, uh, what we call a research project. Uh, so um, we identify a problem or a challenge um, and the student takes the lead on, on this with the assistant uh, or with the assistance of um, an academic mentor from the university and a workplace mentor. So they define together a problem and the student works uh, while working and getting the experience with the employer, the student works on uh, solving a, a real um, uh, life problem for uh, that employer with the involvement of the um, uh, academic mentor. Um, and um, the results usually are, are uh, or at least from what we see with the first batch and the second batch of our students, um, are very, very encouraging. We can uh, come up I with... One of the um, uh, good examples was um, a student who uh, worked with um, um, a company, um, agricultural company. Um, he was uh, an electrical engineering student and he came up with um, a control system to control um, a, a set of um, uh, water pumps um, that basically consume the majority of the energy on, on that agricultural project. And he managed to, to reduce the energy consumption um, significantly by uh, designing and implementing and building this um, uh, uh, control system. Time. On another Universities have worked very hard to educate students. Colleges, polytechnics have worked very hard to train them. But what we've noticed in the last 30 years is two factors. First, the scope and depth and pace of change have been so rapid that keeping up with that change has been an ongoing challenge for institutions that plan curricula years in advance that, that you know that do things on a longer scale the second part of this is globalization we are having now to prepare students not just for local economies but for a global economy and in particular with regulators enforcing key performance indicators with uh, boards of governors and directors in the public system and in the private system, putting pressure on these institutions to perform. There's been a great effort to try and be better at what we do. And so the concept of PACs emerged as an opportunity then a best practice and now just, you know, it seems the only way to proceed. And this is the idea that you would engage with employers and your alumni so as to benefit from their understanding of what that marketplace or that industry needs. And so personal engaged. experience, I've experienced the pack in every possible way. First, as a graduate of my university, I realized that while my professors were absolutely wonderful, I didn't really have the precise skills that my employer was looking for. So the, the learning curve was steep and the, the requirement of the employer to train and in some cases to educate was significant. So I've often thought I could have transitioned better. And then as someone worked for the government as a chief of staff to the Minister of Education and Training, I saw the value of the potential of this connection and we ensured that we mandated it. So many parts of Canada, the colleges sector is required to have a PAC at every program at every level. So not, not clusters and, and not sort of big advisory committees, but actual program related committees for every single one of them and to report on their progress.